Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at Just One Line. This is being developed by JOL Studios, which is like a three-man Italian dev team. Uh, the game is uh, its kind of interesting. When I first looked at this, I was... Uh, I was not really interested because it's, it looks sort of like one of those uh, those mobile games that uh, everyone makes. But I started playing around with it, and it's it's rather interesting. It's it sort of plays out like those the create your own adventure games that uh, I don't know if they're still around, but back when I was a kid, those were those were the thing. Like a book, you you'd read it a little ways in, and and you'd come to a, a moment like you you come across an orc on a bridge. Do you attack the orc or do you uh, try to trick the orc? Uh, if you want to attack, go to page 25. If you want to trick them, you read on. That kind of thing. It sort of plays out like that. And uh, it's kind of how I see it explained here on Steam. It says it's a RPG game book. Uh, a fantasy RPG game book. And that's kind of... Uh, it, it's a very interesting sort of thing. Anyways, let's go ahead and, and try it out and sort of explain what is going on here. So we're set in this, uh, this kingdom. We're going to choose at the beginning what kind of person we are. At the moment, we can't be anything but a commoner. And that's fine, we can be the best commoner around. We also have to be human. Everything else is locked. Once we play the game some more, we will unlock uh, some of these. But uh, for now, we can be, uh, yeah, we can be a human. That's fine, I suppose. Now this is where the game sort of comes in. We, we can choose whether we want to have power as uh, our, well, where we put our points in, our, our attributes, into power, into wit, or into cunning. When we come across these, these, uh, stories, these, uh, things, uh, what am I trying to say, these moments in the story where it's going to ask us questions, like, what do we want to do? Do we want to kill the thing? Do we want to sneak past the thing? Do we want to... Uh, trick the thing. This is where this comes in. If we have skills and power, then we can just put our battle axe in his head. But if we have no skill and power, that would be a very bad idea. Um, so we're gonna go with, um, let's see. Wit uses interactions and require memory, logic, or magic. That's a bad idea for me. Cunning interactions require persuasive, diplomatic, or stealth. That sounds lame. Power interactions require strength, endurance, or to be intimidating. I think I can handle that. We'll put our point into there. We can actually change how we look, too. I'm a pasty guy. We can go pasty. Um, I don't have... I would... I, I, it's impossible for me to have hair like that, but may, maybe in my dreams. And we gotta go with a... Oh, yes, there we go. And we want... Uh, we want blue hair. Oh, gray hair. We're an old man. Okay, that works for me. Okay. We're an old man. We're gonna go with immersive mode. Game won't uh, display any metagame info, but you'll be able to send your character to online leaderboard for your doubt. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So as you play the game and you, and you complete your quests and, and uh, do things, you go into some sort of leaderboard, which is kind of cool. First up, we need to gear up our character. We are a, a wee commoner. A wee commoner that walks around with a pitchfork. This gives us a little bit of a, a better attack ability, and that is... I'm not sure what that... Strength? I'm not sure what that is. But we're going to buy a pitchfork. That sounds like something we need. Uh, we also are going to grab ourselves... We have 250 gold. We're going to buy ourselves a settler suit. Sure. There we go. We're a little bit cooler looking. We're not naked anymore. I can't afford any of these rings, which do things like give me strength or give me wit or give me cunning. Uh, we could buy a, a ale, however. We take a drink and it'll give us extra strength. Red Giant's Ale. Works for me. Okay, so now we're in a tavern right now, basically. That's what's going on. Here's me with my mighty pitchfork. And uh, I have four strength at the moment. If I, I guess if I drink that potion, it gives me four. I'm not sure how that works, actually. Uh, we have one... Is that cunning? And one... Uh, maybe that's wit. And one's cunning. One or the, one or the other. Uh, I have zero renown. This is something that will come in fame as well. Morality and honor. Will come into play depending on how we treat these, these quests that we are on. So, uh, I think we're ready. What's this? Oh, this is the news. And we can see these are like the leaderboards. So, good job, Nemesis. You're very renowned. Uh, quests. We have a trouble with bandits. A group of bandits are pestering our village with impossible demands. We've never been threatened by bandits before. We do not have soldiers to protect us. Please help us get rid of them. 250 gold for that one. This one's red. Fist fights in the tavern. Rascals and delinquents have been amassing in my tavern for several days, participating in clandestine brawls organized by a notable stonecutter dwarf. I need someone who can teach him a lesson, or at least convince him to stop by any means necessary. They're wrecking my tavern, says, uh... Uh, Elven tequila shots for only three coins on Wednesdays. We get 50 gold for going and dealing with this uh, person. We also have rats in the basement. Very typical uh, 
RPG sort of thing. Hounds are searching for a volunteer to do a little routine job. We are too busy to take care of it at the moment. We could highly consider, we would highly consider any help. This is the original message from the old Rennie. Giant rats are infesting, infesting my basement and eating all my supplies. Please help. We get a beer at the inn and my gratitude. Well, I don't know, Remy. Lemons in the cemetery. The visitors have been terrorized by spine-chilling lamentations in the last few days. Bone-chilling horrors, you say? Even during the day. Looking for adventure, willing to take care of the situation for 50 gold. Uh, let's go to the bar first. That sounds like uh, the, the more tame. We're just going to have to go like, just deal with a fist fight or something. We can deal with that. So we're going to head over here to another tavern and uh, have a chat with uh, somebody. A small crowd of yokels and scoundrels is gathered in the center of the inn. They've apparently knocked over tables and stools to make room for two men brawling in the middle. They're making a mess. All around them, all sorts of people cheer for one or the other. Betting, burping, and rudely and annoying cursing. Annoyingly cursing. Two men laying down trying to recover from what seems to have been a sound beating on the ring. Two more contestants, also quite drunk, should begin a new fight, rallying the people inside the inn more, even more. Judging by his apparel, one of them must be a stonecutter. A burly, middle-aged dwarf, his fists as big as his head, and clearly more devoted to fighting than commerce. The other is a young boy with pale skin and very dark hair, wearing a long robe, definitely too wide for his skinny body. So now, this is where we can pick our, uh, our thing here. Do we want to intervene with brute force with our mighty pitchfork? Do we want to intervene peacefully, or do we find the guards? Uh, well, my pitchfork is, uh, clean and, and ready to poke. You throw yourself into the mix, trying to stop the fight. You successfully manage to intervene, interfere, knocking out the dwarf. The boy runs away. Um, speak to the dwarf. The dwarf doesn't want to talk. The punch dazed him, but he's too proud to give in. He barely manages to stand up, all while faltering a little, inches his way towards you, ready to fight. Oh, yes. You carefully observe the dwarf's moves, find, trying to find a weak point. His abdomen is mighty, and his center of gravity low. Hitting him in the stomach doesn't seem like a good idea. Stonecutter tends to hit with a right hook, leaving his left guard wide open. Furthermore, he drank a lot and doesn't seem too stable on his legs. Well, let's go for uh, unleash a left to his face. Yeah, yeah, get him. Your hip just doesn't surprise him. Well, the Stonecutter tends to protect his right guard. He skillfully parries your punch and hits you right in the face with a colossal. Oh, we should have punched with the right to hit him in the left. Oh, right, right. <laughs> uh, hits you in the face with a colossal punch. Oh, my face. Stonecutter arrogantly laughs. The dwarf, the dwarf, advances, swinging blindly. He has to stop at every other punch to catch his breath. You also notice that he seems to be insistently looking at a jug of beer to your left. He must be thirsty. Make your move. He has to stop at every other punch. So we wait till he throws his first punch, then strike. Grab a mug of beer to your left and give it to the dwarf. No, punch him. Too soon. Wait. Every other. Swing one. Wait a minute. Stonecutter was still charging his second punch. He hits you directly in your stomach, leaving you completely out of breath. Every mm -hmm. is exhausted, but tries one last desperate attack. He runs towards you, screaming and drooling like a rabid dog. We're going to counterattack? Uh, yes, all of our strength. What a great move! You dodge the rage-induced attack of the dwarf and respond with a hook to his jaw. The stonecutter, now bent over his knees, exhausted and aching, lowers his guard and for good and gives up, asking to put an end to the brawl. You won this fight. The dwarf, now overwhelmed, won't be creating any more problems in the tavern. That's right, dwarf. Um, speak to the dwarf, follow him again, buy something to drink, or participate in the betting, and challenge to other fighters. Challenge the other fighters. Oh, we can pick some cash, maybe. I should probably go chase that guy, that kid down. He keeps asking me about it. Okay, let's go get him. You run outside, look for him in the alleys. There's no trace of him. You return to the tavern. Ooh, a bummer. Uh, talk to the dwarf. You ask why a stonecutter's became so quarrelsome in the tavern. The dwarf bluntly says that he wanted to give a lesson to all the long-legged son-of-a-guns he met in the inn. His daughter wants to marry someone who belongs to the tall races, and he can't accept that. Only a dwarf, possibly a stonecutter, is worthy of my daughter. Extort the money from the winds. It doesn't matter. Leave this drunkard alone. Uh, am, am, aren't I supposed to, like, get him out of the tavern? Uh, I'll take some cash. Get out of my way, lowlife. I won't give you anything. By the ancestors, be gone. We're trying to stay in. Thoughtful on what to do. Um. I, oh, I guess I'm done here. I go collect my reward. I'm gonna buy something to drink. He go curls his mustache and happily smiles. He's been missing some teeth, poor fella. What do you wish to drink, traveler? You've been uh, look like you look like some excellent red giant's beer. 
A great beverage for someone who loves fighting, or perhaps some wise elf's wine or a fine taste suited for more astute minds. I also have some gold pirate's rum. Oy, just what you need to melt your tongue. Alas, the mad gnome's elixir, perfect to go out all out with your friends, but can cause headaches. I'm gonna go for some golden pirate's rum, that sounds something. Just what you needed, you already feel more lively. No yeah, good, no, right? Uh, participate in the betting and challenge other fighters. Yes! Amused by the previous fight, you decide to ignore the innkeeper's request for help and join in on the clandestine brawling. The stench of sweat and alcohol makes the inn hot and sticky. The crowd cheers and pushes. Some people even start to fight outside the ring because of a lost bet or a drink too much. I think I kind of failed my quest here now. <laughs> to your request of a challenger appears an enormic, enormous dark orc. Hmm. With extremely long black hair. The orc has an eye patch, a big eye patch on his right eye and a wooden leg. His appearance is not very friendly at all. You think you've already won, uh, already found a weakness in your opponent. You step sideways, thinking of your next move. The orc charges towards you, almost blindly. The eye patch over his right eye and long hair doesn't allow a great sight. The orc is quite slow due to his wooden leg and overall size, but he swings some good punches in front of him, trying to hit you in the face. Just one of those could send you straight to the floor. Uh, which eye? His right eye is covered, so I need to dash to the left. I'm gonna buy some time. No, we're gonna dash to the left and get him. Yeah, good job. The orc can't see anything from that side. He doesn't manage to parry your punch. He spits out two large teeth. Now he's enraged. Can I make a necklace out of those? I've played a lot of D&D. &D. I, I need a tooth necklace. The orc is angry, but he's also very drained from the fight. Now limping on his shabby wooden leg, the brute grabs a large empty barrel and slips his head inside. He's able to see you through a hole between two wooden boards. What? It would be impossible to hit him in the head now. The audience doesn't seem to appreciate the orc's cheap trick. Two threatening dwarves show their disappointment even more than the others. Uh, go for the leg, push the dwarves and make a gesture for them to have them help you, or hit him in the head. Um, this seems like a cowardly approach to ask for help from from dwarves. Go for the leg. With a kick, you manage to break the worn out wood that the orc bore instead of his leg. The brute curses several times and has no other choice but to hop his way out of the ring on one leg. You won't be remembered for your sportsmanship, but in a joint like this, it's still a win. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, the crowd cheers and applauds you, banging their fists on the tables. You're the new tavern champion, the best boxer in the rain the rain has ever seen. The minstrels of every city will sing of you. No, not really. You just won a few brawls in a cheap joint, but you have to start somewhere if you want to become a professional boxer. Innkeeper had asked you to suppress the balls and the brawls inside the the balls the brawls inside the tavern, but you went on and encouraged those quarrelsome drunkards even more. Who knows how long this disorder will continue? <laughs> oh, well, we didn't keep doing. <laughs> We didn't take care of the problems affecting the inn. In fact, you made them worse. Brawls will most likely attract bilge rats rather than normal clients. Scoundrels will fill the tables, making the tavern a cove of thieves and quarrelsome folk. I didn't have a choice. You gave me the boot, the the pirate rum. I, that's all I could do. I did make 80 gold, however, so uh, I made more money out of it. I lost a little bit of fame. I did gain some renown, however. I, what do you mean my name, my fame went down? I'm the the best boxer in the place, and my commoner's rank went down a little bit. Each of these are different folks, like we'll have quests to uh, talk to, I don't know, the temple or whatever, and they, depending on how we do with that, we'll raise our uh, our, our, our points, rep reputation with them. Commoners went down a little bit because I didn't actually help. I actually just made things worse. <laughs> That's fine. Alright, back uh, back to the notice board. What do we have over here? Oh, yeah, we, we failed that one. You didn't get the problem, in you in fact, you probably made them worse. Yeah, scoundrels will fill the tables. Making the tavern a cove of thieves and quarrelsome folk. Well, sorry about that. I did buy. I did get 80 gold though. Can I get something new? Dagger. I want like a maul. How do I get that? Can I? Can I buy this? I'm proficient in this type of weapon. What can I get? Oh, combat a raccoon. Oh, a whip. How do I become proficient in that? I want those. Hmm. We do have no money. We could buy a ring though. A ring of power, plus two power if we wear this. Ooh. What else can we get? We can wit, wit, or cunning, or spindle of damage. Some trinkets do not stack their bonuses, so we would get basically this. Oh, that's just damage. This is strength. Or more health. You gain plus two hit points. Um, yeah, that's what I think we're gonna go with that. We don't want to die. Okay, so we're a little bit cooler. Now, do we go with the bandits? Do we go with the rats in the basement? Or do we go with the cemetery? Let's do, uh, Rats in the Basement sounds like, uh, an easy one. We'll do this one, and then we'll go take care of those bandits, if we have time.
Alright, on to, was this, Old Remy? Old Remy's place, who's got rats to deal with. You arrive at Old Remy's house, and he immediately takes you to the hatch. While you're both crossing the room, he mumbles to himself and keeps turning to look at you. You got a problem, Remy? He doesn't ask for the help of a real hunter. Oh, hope you know what you're doing. There was a time when you could count on the Shield Brothers recruits to manage these things, but now it goes to common people like the Hounds to take up arms and protect the subjects of the rain. Actual warriors can be hired by nobles and rich men. And if that wasn't enough, it seems that they're losing their mind now. Better to cut the chase. Cut to the chase, he says. There's work to be done here. I mean, what do you mean a real hunter? He opens the hatch of the basement. Since you are here to help him, he would really be grateful if you could also find his cat. Uh, let's talk about the cat. He says he has a he has closed the poor little beast in the basement to hunt the rats, but the morning after there was no trace of it. <laughs> oh, the rats are a little bit bigger now and a little more satiated. Uh, bargain a better reward for your services. Yeah, I am a hunter. You can convince him to give you ten gold in advance to finish this job. Excellent. Let's go in the basement. The basement is a mess and it's very stinky. You look for animal signs and you find a big crack in the wall behind a half-eaten piece of furniture. No traces of the cat though. Uh, close the hole. <laughs> Tell them it. Uh, that's not okay. Yeah, we gotta go through the crack. Find yourself in a huge system of tunnels, and now you can walk normally. The place is rather dark, but groups of glow glowing cave mushrooms guarantee enough visibility. You start exploring. You find a big rounded cave full of rats. In the middle of it, inside a filthy nest, there's a giant rat surrounded by its brood. Let's kill him. This is the combat screen. The skulls indicate combat difficulty, and they range from one to three, very hard. Wait a minute. The bar indicates your enemy's hit points. Wait a minute. Why is it so difficult? Every time you attack, you and your enemy will deal damages to each other simultaneously. Be careful. Once per quest, you can use your special attack during a fight. Do I have a special fight? This can be used without receiving any damage from your enemy, uh, enemy as a free action. The special attack could un uh, unlikely either kill your opponent in one shot or do nothing. It's more likely that they'll deal a random damage to your enemy. I always run away when things get tough, but we ain't going to do that. Keep an eye on your health bar, which is this red one, during fights, but also in other non-risky, uh, non-combative action. Okay. I have hard push. Swarm of rats, rats is undamaged and ready to engage in combat. I'm going to walk up and I'm going to push him? That doesn't sound like a thing to do. Your weapon is most effective against this enemy. Oh, really? It's the pitchfork of rat slaying, eh? Alright, yeah, we'll push him, rats, sure. Take that, rats. Uh, Swarm of rats is barely scratched. You ought to do better than this. Well... Who to thunk? Pushing rats wouldn't do any good. Oh, I did it? I just... Oh, look at that. Swarm of rats have been defeated. You are victorious. I took two damage. I slaughtered them. All, a whole swarm of rats with my swing of pitchfork. Of rat slang. On the way back, you notice another small tunnel that you missed before. You get closer, and you see that it splits into two. On the right side, you can see a weak, bluish luminescence coming from the end of the tunnel. On the left side, you can hear a meow, and it's probably Remy's cat. Remy's cat. Uh, we'll get the cat in a minute. Let me follow this luminescence. You follow the path until you reach another cave, a smaller one. Here you find the source of the luminescence, a pool of crystal clear water. On the edge of the pool, a carved glass base stands from the water with a big crystal on it. You get closer to the base, and you see an average-sized rat drinking from the pool. But it runs scared as it hears the noise. The luminescence you notice before comes from the inside of the crystal. It seems to come down and spread in the water thanks to a channel in the base. Uh, let's look at the base. The inscribed sign seems to be magically r magical runes, but you have no idea in their meaning. In any case, magical runes aren't usually a good thing. Depends on who put them there. It's actually a weird base. Um, let's go examine that crystal. The bright heart of the crystal is really weird, but also very w truly wonderful. You are sure you could earn a lot if you sold it. Oh, that's a trap. I know what it is. Do I want to well, try to activate the trigger and take the crystal? There's a trigger. Oh, yeah, do that. Start working on the mechanism until you're sure it's switched off. You grab the crystal, but the trigger starts anyways. No. The luminescent flow stops immediately. You're ready to avoid any kind of traps you could have switched on, but nothing happens. Oh, only a few moments after the click, you notice some waves in the pool. They become a whirl, and then water starts to rise in some sort of human shape. While it keeps spinning fast, the creature stands in front of you, and it doesn't look friendly. Uh, run? Fate? Or communicate? Uh, I'm a little bit damaged. Let's talk to it. That sounds good. good. It's better not to mess with these magical creatures. You raise your hands and try to talk to the elemental. It doesn't seem to understand you, and it bears down on you. You offer the crystal that you have just taken. Offer the, the crystal that you've just taken. No, don't do that. And it seems to have the desired effect. The creature slows down 
and gets closer to grab it. Turn and run away. <laughs> um, no, give him the crystal, I guess. Elemental reaches for you and grabs or reaches you and grabs the crystal. Now it looks totally disinterested in you. In fact, it turns around and goes back to the pool. It places the crystal back on the base. Then it becomes simple water again. It's better to figure it about the base. You focus on the water now. It's clear and has some luminescence of the crystal. Closer look. You're not an enchanter, but this is definitely not simple water. Maybe it caused, caused the giant rats? Can I be a giant? Giant, giant me? You have a sip of the pool. That rat drank from here. What could ever go wrong? Yeah, it's just rat spit. After a while, you start feeling warm in your chest. It's pleasant. You feel a lot stronger. There's nothing else to do here. Not only am I rat slayer with my pitchfork, I'm now rat man drinking their spit. Go back to an intersection. Uh, let's go follow that meow here. As you walk through the tunnel, the meowing gets more and more intense. Rennie's cat must be one of those big fatty ones. <laughs> you reach another narrow fissure. Is there anything else? Is there any other kind of cat? You look into it, and when two big shiny eyes appear, you jump out of your skin. You can't believe your your eyes. There's a cat on the other side, but it's tiger-sized. Um, yeah, what the heck? Let's just go through there. Dimensions aside, it looks docile, so you decide to get through the fissure. The big cat welcomes you with purrs and pushes against the wall, trying to rub itself against you. Uh, let's take a look at this giant cat. You have no idea what's going on down here. Everything is simply bigger, including me. I guess I should have gone for the cat first. It seems like the story is a little out of whack. Uh, call it to get out of here. You pet a little bit, then you, then you squeeze through the fissure and try to make the cat follow you. It tries to shrink as much as possible. Then while pulling it a little harder, you're able to get it out of here. After that, the big kitten runs away, probably searching for Rennie. Get back to the intersection. Back to Rennie. Come out of the basement, satisfied and ready to tell your story to Renny. Well, make it make it a little more extravagant, of course. Oh, we fin we actually accomplished this mission. Who doesn't like us? The woodland keepers don't like us. Why? Uh, you go back to Renny. Uh, the problem with rats is solved for good. You even be uh, have been able to trace his cat. Now you can enjoy that free beer to celebrate. Excellent. Just stashed a new race or background. This means it'll now possible confirm it's unlocked when you retire. Oh, so now we can play as a hunter. Uh, that's cool. Uh, Willing Keepers, because we because we killed some rats, is that what, you're, what you have a problem with? You have a problem with rats? Perhaps. Back to the, uh, inn here. And let's, uh, let's see how we're going. We're already at 22 minutes. Do we have time to do one more? Maybe. Can I buy something? Oh, you only, all you got me was, man, you're smart. You didn't give me any money, did you? Last right, till so the end of your next quest. We're gonna go kill some some uh, some bandits. I think we need power to kill these bandits. So let's drink this wine. Or do we want? To, what's this one do? Plus one defense, I guess. We want strength. Drink that up. Uh, how do I see me? Uh, but it's only available for commoner adventure. And don't and you let it use it. My commoner skill. You can change the background with any of those. I can change my background. I'm going to change background. Attention, you can do this only once on this adventure, and there's no going back. Uh, what do hunters do? You can use gear from the power and a cunning advanced list. Related attribute is power. Well, that's me. Unique interactions. Tracker. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. What the heck? Sure. I'm a hunter now. Can I get something else? Can I, like, add points? No. I'm just a hunter. No. I wear, yeah, wear the stupid hat. Uh, and I have my quartz of health, of course. I also... I guess that's it. What is this? Oh, this is like a help menu. Right, right, right. Um, okay. Trouble with bandits or the cemetery one? The bone-chilling horror or the bandits? I mean, that's 250 gold. How can I pass this up? Oh, wait a minute. Um, I can use other things now, right? I can use a bow now. Oh, uh, I can use a bow. Cool. Or a sword. I can use a sword? How do I make... Hmm. Can I sell my stuff? Ooh, hide armor, leather armor. Yeah, let's go. Get, let's go do this real quick. I want to buy some things. Two hundred fifty gold. We got this. We're gonna go in there with our trusty pitchfork and run off a bunch of bandits. I guess. I mean, they're just bandits. They, they can't deal with the guy that took out the orc in the inn. You arrive at the village early in the morning. You talk to the old man, but he doesn't have any gold to offer. The shield brothers of the fortress up the hills don't want to send their warriors. They say they have more urgent matters to deal with at the moment. You, they protected us for years. We don't know how to defend ourselves. Don't abandon us. Cursing the, curses the old man. You leave his house, tinkering, thinking that you should help him anyway. 
Do I? You're close to the stables, and you're admiring a nice horse. You could have asked for, uh, as payment for your help when a boy comes to the village running and shouting at the top of his lungs about an imminent attack by the bandits. They have killed the sentinels in the watchtower. Killed? Wait, wait a minute. This is this a life or death sort of thing? Try to leave the village before it's too late, like a coward. Empty the first... Enter the first house you find and barricade the entrance, like a coward. Go back to the old man's house and accept the job without compensation. What? Like a fool. All right. The old man is grateful for your noble spirit. He entrusts you with the defense of the village. Me? In the square, some old men have taken up weapons, but they seem scared. An old man is shouting that he will win his this fight on his own, waving around a stick. Others are panicking in the village. Well, I have a stick as well. Gather all those that can hold a weapon and motivate them to in with an inspired speech. Convince the old men to gather all women and children and take them to a safe place. That you don't need them here. Uh, I'm not much of a talker. But that seems more reasonable than just telling them to go away. Your words are reassuring. The men stop shaking and are ready to fight ferociously. Oh yes, I killed many rats with this pitchfork. It's time, still time to improve the defenses. Uh, okay, yeah, go get him the safe place. At first, he doesn't seem to cooperate much. What do you mean? You convince him. Now he understands the importance of this task. When he goes away, the other men become relaxed. There's no time left. You see the bandits coming towards the village. They stop at the entrance of the square, looking at your troop. A tattooed man with long hair steps forward and admits to be surprised of seeing you there ready to fight. There's no need to talk. Order the attack and charge the chief of the bandits. No, let's, uh, let's talk first. He looks at your forces for a while. He thought it would be way easier. He spits on the ground and swears, then he leaves the village. Oh, look at that! The village praise you as a hero and managed to put together some gold and thank you for their help. 50 gold. Really? I just saved the town and you give me 50 gold? Hmm. That's the last time I saved this poor town. What can I get with 20 gold? Or 50 gold, I mean. Can we buy something? Uh, we could buy a sword or a spear. I do want a sword. My pitchfork is quite mu Ooh, a mace. Or an axe. Effectively, it's all light armored foe. There's a saber. Quarter staff. I'm gonna go with the mace. What else do we have here? I can't afford any of this stuff. Ooh, chain mail? Padded armor, we don't want that. I want a mace. Okay. Excellent. Am I, am I wielding the mace now? Yes, I am. Okay. We saw the cemetery one. We have oh, we have a new one. Enchanted waters. I, Jeanbo, druids of the circle of the woodland keepers, invoke the help of an adventurer to recover information regarding a recent barbarian, barbaric, and inconsiderate poisoning of the waters of this earth for 100 gold. Uh, maybe, but we are out of video time, so I'm gonna end it here. What is this? Oh, if we want to retire, we can retire there and start a new character or whatever. We're not gonna do that right now. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Again, this is just one line. It is available now on Steam. It is in early access. I don't think I mentioned that. So there is uh, development is supposed to be happening in time. Um, oh, one thing I also I forgot to mention. I was reading some of the, the notes on the planned development of the game. And one thing they mentioned was a sort of Steam Workshop thing where we can... Uh, where y people could make their own quests for the game, which I think, uh, which is one thing which kind of swayed me towards this game, seeing that. That is a very interesting thing. It's sort of like a Neverwinter Nights kind of create your own mission sort of thing, which I think is kind of cool and could be really cool if uh, if done well. Uh, anyways, this uh, I'll put a link in the description to the Steam page if you'd like to check it out. It is uh, quite cheap. It just came out, uh, what was it, yesterday? It is 10 bucks right now and on sale at the moment, but uh, anyways, enough yammering. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.